What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. It is Friday over here. Hope you guys are doing well. Bitcoin, as we speak right now, is at about 33.5K. Pull back almost 2% today. What could this mean for the overall crypto markets? Because it is very important to be keeping your eyes out on Bitcoin. It is the driver of the entire crypto markets. If Bitcoin goes up, as we have seen earlier this week, it will pull quite a bit of these altcoins up with it. However, when it is pulling back, as we see right now, we do see quite a bit of these altcoins pulling back as well. So we're going to be taking a look into the Bitcoin chart and see where it is likely to bounce or is it likely to continue pulling back, dragging quite a bit of these altcoins down with it. Now, the main topics for this video will be CASPA, ICP, and Flux. We're going to be taking a look into the latest technical price analysis for these tokens, as well as their upside and downside price targets, and some key price levels to be paying attention to in order for these coins to go either direction. Okay, now, of course, none of what I'm saying here is financial advice. It's purely my personal speculations and opinions. I could very well be wrong. I am not a financial advisor, nor am I an elite trader of any sort, even though I am a profitable trader who's been able to keep most of my profits during the last bear market, and I'm looking to crush it here for the next bull cycle. So if you guys feel the same way, if you guys are feeling pumped on this Friday morning, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. Let's get right into it. All right, so we do have Bitcoin right now, 33.5K, pulling back, okay? Um, we're on the weekly time frame right now, so this is still the most important chart to be paying attention to, in my opinion, because we have broken out of this long-term pattern here, this cup and handle, right? Resistance was at about 32K area, has been resistance for quite some time, and finally broken through this week okay that is very bullish because of you know what just happens right now measure move out of this breakout of this cup and handle for bitcoin is right underneath 50k okay 49 ish right so um measure moves of course are estimates only okay it could be over and under it is to be taken with a grain of salt because i've seen you know uh price action doing different things according to their measure moves. Um, especially in bull markets, measure moves get crushed by the bulls. However, in bear markets, measure moves are, you know, are uh, don't usually get met, okay? As we have seen with quite a bit of these altcoins so far, or it takes a longer time for them to be met, okay? So something to be considering. Now, if we actually get to 50K and meets this measure target, then I'm looking at the next measure target here, which is basically the breakout of this bigger falling wedge pattern, which is basically your 2022 bear markets. Uh, and we have broken out of that, okay? Bitcoin has broken out of that. Measure move out of that would be 55K area. So um, very close to each other, but it is something to be keeping in mind of. Now, on a lower time frame here, what could be happening? I did mention yesterday that there was a cup and handle pattern on this four hour time frame, even apparent, or um, or even the lower time frame here, right? Even the lower time frame here, two hour time frame, right? It looked like a cup and handle. However, this price action was not able to hold and break out of this cup and handle. Okay, so right now it is pulling back. What could be what could be uh, Bitcoin be doing right now instead? Okay, so two hour time frame, we could still see a falling wedge pattern, right? But if we actually come over here to the six hour time frame, we are going to be touching the six hour 21 SMA currently at about which is the blue line here, currently at about 33.4k area. Okay, we have not bounced off that moving average yet. So in my opinion, I think there is a pretty good chance that this price action bounces off this 
uh, moving average because it is a um, just from my own ob uh, observations. Okay. Um, so, I mean, it's not a guarantee that it's going to bounce off and, you know, uh, where it takes the price action back higher, but I think it will still get a pretty good bounce. That is just my opinion. I could very well be wrong. So don't <laughs> take that as financial advice, of course. Um, so this is what I'm looking at. If, and we have a falling wedge that kind of goes along with it too, right? So a bullish pattern and a moving average where I would expect uh, this price action to get a pretty good bounce off of, okay? So two things that I'm pointing out here. Of course, if Bitcoin actually breaks down from this falling wedge uh, against its probabilities and it breaks this moving average, right? The next one I'll be looking at Let me see on the hourly. Okay, the the next one I'm really looking at would probably be back down to 32K, okay? um, So this six hour 21 SMA, if it doesn't hold, then it looks like we're going to be heading back to 32K and that's going to drag quite a bit of these altcoins down with it. Um, So very important to be paying attention to Bitcoin right now as always, okay? Because we don't have any other moving averages below this and if we break this uh falling wedge that's very bearish because usually price action breaks out of a falling wedge now let's go ahead and move on to caspa and see what has gone on in this market come over here to the weekly time frame now this coin has been very impressive uh in terms of a technical analysis standpoint because this price action has been running within this rising wedge for quite some time with quite a bit of divergence on the RSI, okay? Usually, price action do does break out of a rising wedge to the downside, okay? This is still intact, okay? Um, let's just say if it breaks down by one, two, three... In three weeks, okay, you're going to get a measure move down to about 1.65 cents area. 1.65 cents area. Now, um, that is basically what technical analysis is saying, okay? Um, it, that's not my opinion, but my opinion is that this is pretty impressive, okay? Now, of course, there is still a probability, a less of a probability that this uh, price action breaks out of this rising wedge pattern okay so it's going to start from if you want to if you want to see caspa break out of this rising wedge pattern first of all you're going to see you need to see uh price action break out of at least i'm going to say safely 5.8 cents area okay Just safely okay and then if you don't break out in time if you break out later, then you're going to be looking at an upward sloping trend line here. Okay. So let's take a look into some key supports and resistances for CASPA. Okay. So weekly time frame, weekly 21 SMA, 3.8 cents, the blue line here. That's going to be quite some way down. Your gray line here, which is your weekly 50 SMA, 2.4 cents area. So that's going to be pretty far down as well. Um, those are going to be some key supports for CASPA. Okay, you guys can repeat the same exercise for the daily, three-day, monthly timeframes, finding moving averages as key supports and resistances. We're not going to do that here because that would take quite a bit of time. So I'm just going to point out some of them to you. Now, of course, the key resistance here is going to be your upper trend line on this rising wedge, okay? Very bullish if this price action is able to break out of this rising wedge. Now, let's go ahead and take a look into ICP. See what's going on in here. All right, ICP here, rise, oh, falling wedge. It has not broken out of this falling wedge yet, Okay. I think on the three-day time frame where you can actually see a, val a validated falling wedge here because we got three candles touching on both trend lines. Okay, so if ICP is able 
if ICP is able to break out of this rising wedge, falling wedge, excuse me, if ICP is able to break out of this falling wedge, we have measure move, $7.60 area, okay? That would be the measure target out of this falling wedge, which is basically you take the opening measurement of the pattern and then you put it on a future breakout date. Okay, so I think this is reasonable. Now, let's see what's happening on the lower time frames here. Okay, let's see if we can get any kind of clues on if this price action is going to be heading towards the upper trend line or heading back down to the bottom trend line. Okay, as we have said yes, uh, last time we talked about this, there was a double bottom. Okay, it looks like price action has broken out of that double bottom because it is above that neckline of about $3.35 area. Measure move out of that smaller double bottom will give you about a $3.85-ish uh, measure target. Uh, ICP has went up as far as about $3.70 area. Okay, so let's see if this can continue. So let's go down to the lower time frame here and see if I can get any clues on what could be happening. I'm sorry for the dogs. I'm not going to go and get the dogs right now. So, uh, if you guys see, if you guys hear any barking, just excuse me. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and go to the hourly time frame because I don't see a particular pattern here on the four hour time frame. I still don't see a particular pattern here. It looks like you had some kind of rising wedge breakdown. Right. Has some kind of rising wedge breakdown. And then it basically continued downwards. Um, actually it had a double bottom here on this hourly time frame. Or no, I can't call that double bottom. I mean. Yeah, you could. I mean, that's a double bottom there. And then it basically broke. Uh, it tried to break out, but it was not successful. Okay. So um, that's basically what I'm seeing so far. You had a breakdown of this rising wedge. And then you had a double bottom failed. Um, and now it looks like it wants to continue lower. Okay. So uh, let's take a look into some key price levels to be paying attention to for ICP. Weekly 21 SMA, your blue line here, okay, $3.65. Weekly 50 SMA, $4.50 area, okay, your gray line here. Now, those are going to be some key moving averages and resistances to be paying attention to. Find the rest yourself based on what I'm doing here. Key support, let's take a look. We don't have any moving averages beneath the price action right now on the weekly, but we do on the three-day time frame. $3.15 15 cents area, the blue line here, that's going to be your immediate key support on this time frame here. Okay, so that's basically what I'm seeing for ICP. Let's take a look into Flux. Flux here. Talked about this. Falling wedge scenario and a smaller falling wedge inside the bigger one. Okay, both are, they both usually break to the upside. Okay, so right now, let's go ahead and it looks like it's trying to break out of the bigger falling wedge. So let's take away the smaller one here. I'm going to make the trend lines as tight as possible. So I can get a clear read here. Okay. So. All right. Let's come down to three day time frame even. Okay. Three day time frame. It looks like we are trying to, uh, Flux is trying to break out of uh, this chart here right now right it is above the three day fifth 21 sma 
Okay, it looks like this could be a breakout here. Okay, so very important to be paying attention to what is going on here because it looks like it is having a breakout as of the last three day candle. Let's take a look into the smaller time frame, see if we can get any clues on what's happening. If this would likely be a successful breakout or would it be a fake out, right? So, four hour time frame. It looks like this could be some type of a cup and handle pattern that's forming, but Flux does need to come back up to about 37.50 cents, 37.5 cents, okay? 37.5 cents to retest this neckline. If it is able to break out of 37.5 cents, then I would say that, you know, this has actually been, uh, you know, basically broke out uh, with more, uh, with a higher probability of success, okay? So measure targets for flux out of this breakout would be about 86 cents area, okay? Well, let's adjust for this actual breakout point. Actually, that will give you about right underneath 90 cents area, okay? Right underneath 90 cents. So very important to be paying attention to the four hour time frame and see if this is an actual breakout or a fake out. If it is able to break out of this cup and handle here, 37.5 cents here, then I would say with higher probability that this is a successful breakout. Let's take a look into some key supports and resistances. Let's come down to daily time frame. okay? Daily 200 SMA, 43 cent area, the orange line. Daily 21 SMA, 34 cents area supports. Daily 50 SMA, 33 cents area. That's your next key support on this time frame. Now, that's basically what I'm seeing so far for Flux. Now, if you guys want me to continue bringing you guys uh, any of these updates for any of these coins, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Letting me know that you guys do want to see more of these coins, updates. I'll bring you guys updates if enough of you guys want to see it. Now, what I'm currently doing is I am leverage trading mainly longs. I usually go with the more recent trend of Bitcoin. And the recent trend of Bitcoin has been bullish, right? Uh, that's on the shorter trend. But even on the longer time frame, it still looks bullish, okay? But that is not to say I would not short any coins as well because if these coins have been pumping very hard, they're at resistance and they have a nice pattern for me to actually open positions on, I will open shorts as well. But mainly right now, I am long on quite a bit of all coins. You guys let me know what you guys are doing. Are you guys holding? Are you guys trading? What are you guys trading? What are you guys holding? How is this market treating you? Thank you very much. Have a great rest of the weekend.